All right, it is on to the college football class of 2024. Going to take a look at these, maybe the top 30 or 40 players here. Give my thoughts and stuff like that. Guys, I, I don't know about recruiting, you know, it, it, following recruiting back in 2016, 2017, I don't know, you know, it's probably the NIL, but it's just, I, I don't even follow it anymore, honestly. It's, it's, it's miserable to follow because at the end of the day, a lot of these kids we saw with, in the class of 2023, it's just about who offers the most at the end. And it's funny to see, like, the industry has all of these insiders, and it's like the insiders, at what point do you just say, the kid's going to go to whoever offers the most money? And I'm not blaming the kids, that's what they're doing, but uh, it is kind of like like following any of this stuff is so dumb. Um, just because like you can recruit a kid perfectly, and if you don't have the money, it's not going to matter. So we're just going to look through this, and, and kind of I'll give my take on it. So Dylan Rayola, you know what, Ohio State needs to stop recruiting number one overall quarterbacks. First Quinn Ewers, now Dylan Rayola, decommitting from Ohio State. I don't think we ever really got the word on Dylan Rayola. I think it was like, I guess he's obsessed with like having the perfect offensive coordinator or something, and Ohio State didn't want that. I, I don't know. Uh, but you've got Georgia, who actually identified Dylan Rayola. They were like the first big team to identify him. And then Nebraska, of course, although I've seen Georgia's offered a few different quarterbacks. We'll see what happens. He is the number one overall player on every single site, so he has the perfect 1,000 rating. I don't know how this site does it, but they have him at 98. But overall, he's, he is like the only five-star on every single site in the 2024 class. Next, we have Jeremiah Smith, who is the consensus number one overall receiver committed to Ohio State. You know, with Brian Hartline and Ohio State recruiting, I would think he would be pretty safe to stay committed. Uh, Mike Matthews, the number three overall player. I think he's an athlete. But right now they have him listed as a receiver. I don't know. It's, they have NIL value now. The NIL value, $192,000. I wonder how, I'm guessing that's gauged based on following, like your your Twitter followers. Yeah, who knows? Uh, it looks like Clemson and Georgia. Kids from Georgia. I would probably, guys, Georgia right now is recruiting like crazy. KJ Bolden, the Safety, the fourth, fourth overall player from Georgia. I would guess he would probably go to Georgia, but it could be an NIL thing. Ellis Robinson, the fourth, the number two overall, or the number one overall cornerback, the number five overall player from Connecticut, already committed to Georgia, so that's a really good get for them. Micah Hudson, I'm guessing Texas, Texas is going to throw him a bunch of money. They, uh, you know, he's a receiver, top 10 overall player. Colin Simmons, LSU heavy leader for him. That's good news for them. Edge rusher from Texas. Uh, you've also got maybe Texas in the mix. It's impossible to handicap these races. A lot of it comes down to who's got the best NIL fund. So, you know, you can say a team is leading. David Stone, Mich Michigan State randomly. Oh, he's going to IMG Academy, but he was originally from Oklahoma. So Oklahoma's going to be in on him. He is a big defensive tackle. Uh, Jalen Mimbakwi is a cornerback who, uh, actually, he's listed as an athlete. He's from Alabama. He's already committed to Alabama. No surprise there. Kind of interesting. Who is that? Rivals? Rivals has him at 73. Every other service has him inside the top 10. So... You got to think that's good news for Alabama. That's just what they need is, is more good news. But I, I would expect rivals to correct that and probably make him like a top 20 player at least. Next, you've got Williams and Wanry, who is a, a pass rusher from Missouri. And I, I'm guessing he's going to an SEC team. Uh, it's, probably, it's probably not going to be Missouri or Kansas, but we will see. Uh, JoJo Trader, a receiver. Currently, uh, possibly Miami or, or or Ohio State. I know, you know, there were some questions. Would he play receiver or cornerback? But it's looking like he wants to play receiver. Edric Houston, an edge rusher. Looks like it's Clemson and Georgia. Sammy Brown, linebacker from Georgia. A lot of, I mean, Georgia is just, they've got such a, a, a grasp right now because they have such a ridiculously talented state. They've won the last two national championships. 
and I did hear that this kid was leaning to Clemson, but we'll see. He is the number one overall linebacker. Kobe Black, the cornerback, currently maybe Oklahoma State, maybe A&M, the boosters throw some money. TJ Cappers, the linebacker, currently committed to Louisville. I'm guessing he'll decommit and go to whoever like a better team in terms of NIL. Louisville had this problem last year where they got two higher ranked players. They ended up just getting outbid by SEC schools, I believe. DJ Lagway <laughs> committed to Florida. You remember Florida's NIL issues with that other quarterback? They said they were... Florida is so desperate. They offered a four-star quarterback, not even a five-star quarterback, $13 million, and they couldn't pay it. So the kid got out of it, and he ends up going to, I think, Arizona State. This is... It's just such... It's just, it's just horribly managed, the whole NIL thing. Like, you're a solid four-star quarterback. You're a top 50 player. Your NIL... You agree to a $13 million NIL deal. It doesn't work out. And now you have to go to Arizona State. I guess you know what it is? He can just transfer in the portal now. I mean, these kids are just left and right. Left and who knows? Elijah Rushing. That's a great name for a pass rusher. Uh, I don't think he's going to go to Arizona. But I mean, it's just, you know, he's from Arizona. So they're going to make that the favorite right now. Uh, Davis, this quarterback from New, uh, North Carolina. Heavy Michigan lean. This, I mean, listen, Ohio State should have just went after this kid instead of Dylan Rayola, but I guess, you know, you got to go after him. He probably would have committed to Ohio State, Davis, but um, Ohio State went after Dylan Rayola, and now they're going back to him, and he's like, bro, you pick someone over me, I'm not going back. So he's probably going to Michigan. We'll see. Jedrick Gibson. The number one running back uh, from Gainesville, Florida. I would expect Florida to be in heavy pursuit of him. Justin Scott, he's an interior defensive lineman. That would be a big get for Marcus Freeman. Franklin, an interior defensive lineman from SEC country. Ole Miss, Tennessee, we'll see. Julian Sayan, who is a quarterback from California, already committed to Alabama, Stewart, Dylan Stewart, an edge rusher from Washington, D.C. Maybe South Carolina gets their hands on him or Maryland with him being from the D.C. area. Ryan Wingo. I thought Ryan Wingo was ranked higher than this. They got him at 24 in the composite. Uh, Tennessee, I did hear Tennessee, maybe Notre Dame. Uh, Wilmer, uh, an interior defensive lineman from Baltimore, Maryland, Penn State, maybe Maryland, but he is a transfer to IMG, so I would say I would say his recruitment's wide open. Landon Thomas, another tight end who's going to Georgia. At least he's committed right now. Bryce West, a cornerback from Northwest Northeastern Ohio. Uh, yeah, I would certainly say Ohio State for him. Peyton Woodyard, a court or a safety from California, already committed to Georgia. Charles Lester the third. Possibly going to Alabama. He's from Sarasota, Florida. Cam Williams, that's a that's a good get for Notre Dame. A receiver from Illinois. They hold on to him. Miles Graham. He is a linebacker. That's a nice early commitment for Florida. And he's from Atlanta, Georgia, but he's currently Oh yeah, he's still there. I thought he was at IMG. Uh Mylon Graham, a receiver from Indiana. Heavy Ohio State lane with Ryan Hartline. Uh, Quinton Martin, Penn State needs to get him. They need to start getting some big players in state. I know they did a good job last year, but those are just kind of the top 30-ish players. And then going to the overall rankings, and it's pretty remarkable. Uh, Georgia with 10 commits and three five-stars, an, an average of 96. That's very impressive right now. <clears throat> you have... Notre Dame, they always get off to a good start. They've got eight four-stars. LSU has seven. Uh, both of those teams doing quite all right. Florida State, they've got nine commits, but they do have three three-stars. Michigan, they're off to a much better start on the trail. They've had a brutal few years recruiting, but they've done well in the portal. South Carolina, that's a really good start for South Carolina. Five commits, all solid four-stars, an average rating above 93. Texas A&M, a bunch of three-stars. Oregon, five four-stars. They've been doing well with their Nike NIL money. Alabama, almost a 97 average. They've got two five-stars, two four-stars. Duke appearing inside the top 10. That's always fun, mainly due to the seven commits. They're all three-stars. 
Florida. I mean, that's a really good start for Florida if they can hold it. 96 overall average with uh, one five-star and three four-stars. Iowa with a bunch of three stars. Colorado, Deion Sanders with two four stars. That's good for Colorado, honestly. Clemson, solid start. They've got four four stars with five commits. Texas A&M, decent. Ohio State, good start. 96 average, the one five star, two four stars. Michigan State, very good start for them. Yeah, Michigan State has definitely turned it up. They, You can tell Michigan State has a really good NIL, or at least a decent NIL, because they weren't recruiting nearly this good under D'Antonio, and they were winning more. So that, that tells me they're using their NIL really well, and, and they've got a, a good system there. Tennessee has a decent NIL. They have three commits. Texas on the board with three commits. Auburn and really no one else. Penn State with two commits, both four stars. That's decent. But yeah, that's pretty much it for that in terms of the update for the 2024 class. So again, when it comes to following recruiting, I mean, it, it was so fun back in like 2017, 2018, but I just can't do it anymore. You know, you can't even get updates on these players. I mean, you want to give an update on some of these guys, whoever gives them the most money. This is free agency, right? It's a elongated version of free agency. And, and it's not like that with every player, but you know, these guys, they, they all want to go to the campuses. They want to see everything. And then, I mean, it, it, like once we get towards the end, a recruitment will swing. I mean, we saw it with that safety. Who was it? Peyton Bowman. I mean, what a joke that is. The kid literally commits to three different universities within an hour because it's like Oregon just offered me 500K. I'm going to commit there. But, oh no, now... You know, Oklahoma offers me a million. It's like, dude, this is a joke, man. I mean, I mean, how did they not see this being what it was? I mean, it's just, I, I don't know. It's like, and then you can't even follow it. There's no point in following it. You could do everything perfect. If you don't have the NIL money, you're not going to get these kids. And I mean, listen, these are young kids. Obviously, if one team is offering half a million dollars and another team is offering, you know, nothing except, oh, you can come and compete. You're going to take the, you know, half a million dollars. Let's just call it what it is. So, I don't know. It's just in a terrible spot. And, you know, we'll see what ends up happening with this recruiting. I do know Alabama and Georgia are just throttling everyone right now in terms of recruiting. The overall depth their rosters are going to have is just ridiculous for like the next four or five years. I'm very happy we're going to the 12-team playoff because that's going to create more opportunities to upset those teams. I mean, also it's going to create they're going to be in the playoffs every year. But like the main argument against the 12-team playoff is, oh, you're giving Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State a free ride to the playoff. They were already making the playoff every year anyways. They're already making it anyways. At least this gives another chance for an upset and, and like a Cinderella team to come on and win. I mean, we were like a, uh, we were this close to a TCU Ohio State National Championship and, and you get new blood into it. Instead, you know, Georgia beats Ohio State and then it's the same thing over and over again. That That's college football's problem. We need more talent spread out. And then they say, oh, with NIL, it's going to spread talent out, right? Because you're going to have Tennessee be able to give these guys money. When really, you look at the recruiting, Alabama and Georgia have never recruited better. With their overall talent per recruit, their rosters, Alabama had eight five-stars last year. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the fix is at this point, um, you know, but that's the current situation when it comes to 2024. We'll have to see what ends up happening, but that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.